Oh my gosh. I need to. Wait, should I? <laughs> I feel bad doing this on these demos. I have to. I gotta do it. In today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different than I'm used to doing on this channel. And I'm actually kind of excited. I uh, just a few few days ago got my, my new Seconic C800 spectrometer. And I'm excited about this because it's a tool that's gonna help me get a lot better at uh, one of the parts of lighting that I really don't have that much expertise or really even experience at all in. Uh, and that is lighting for, for camera and broadcast which as we all know has become increasingly more important. And I figured this would be a great time to refine my skills a little bit and go play with some awesome, cool new toys from Robe. Yeah, uh, I found out the other night while I was at the shop that there was a whole series of all the new Robe fixtures, the Lead Beam 350, the T2, and the Forte. Yes, or as I like to call it, the, uh, the BMF LED. I, th I really think they should have gone with that name. But all that aside, I'm excited to be testing this out. This isn't like a, you know, this isn't really like a, a testing video per se. Like I'm not going to be publishing like numbers in a in a chart about these fixtures that I'm going to go put the, the spectrometer on. But I just really want to get a chance to see what the different technologies from these fixtures are offering in terms of quality of light. Because that's what this is all about measuring. It's about measuring both, you know, uh, lux at a point and then also measuring color quality. So I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get over to the shop. So with all that said, let's head over to the shop and, uh, and play with some lights. <laughs> it always feels like I'm breaking into R90 when I'm showing up here in the dead of night. Oh my gosh, here they are. Look at them. So beautiful. We've got the uh, the Forte here, the new lead beam 350. The T2, I'm presuming. Yeah, this is the T2, right? Yeah, T2, there it is. And uh, this is the Esprit follow spot system with a uh, little camera on the front. Pretty cool. So I'm going to take a little time here, set everything up, and uh, we can start playing with some fixtures, yeah. It's always so crazy to me. Every time I stop by R90, it seems like their space is just multiplying more and more. Uh, when I first moved out to Seattle, Joe, uh, Joe Cole, a guy who owns R90, he, he really gave me a, a couple of really good um, opportunities as uh, a new programmer who just moved into the city. So I'm always grateful for, for, his, um, for his help and, and uh, it's just, yeah, it's so crazy to see how much it's grown in just the couple of years that I've, I've been out here. Oh, hey, it'd probably be, a, probably be a good idea to turn some lights on, huh? That's better. All right, so our mission is now get these guys hooked up to power, run some data cables to a console, get that booted up, and uh, go from there, yeah. Gotta make sure they don't uh, hit each other. So when you roll it in, it's one set of split colors. As you get to the center of it, you get to a four-way split color, kind of like the old like Club Martin Club yep, fixtures. Yep, yep. And then, well, there's something else about that fixture that I was like, oh, that's really neat, and I, I can't I can't place it right now. You know, I've always thought it would be so cool if fixtures could communicate the XML files for their fixture profile over RDM back to the console, just in case like you don't have the fixture profiles on your desk or your flash drive or whatever. Pretty hopeful with like a GDTF and MVR 
that uh, you know we won't even have to worry about fixture modes anymore. Everything will just be like one mode, and we won't have to worry about channel footprint size, all those sorts of things. So that's that's probably still like another ten years out. So this here is a spectrometer or spectrometer, spectrograph, whatever you want to call it. It is a tool that is used to measure the color output of light as well as intensity. This one also happens to do intensity. This little white dome up here is actually in front of a CMOS sensor, kind of like you would see in a camera. And uh, its whole job is to collect ambient light and give uh, give actual hard values as to the wavelengths that are coming in and comparing that against what we consider a standard source like the sun. I've actually taken this meter out. Uh, the first day I got it, I was like, I've got to go measure the sun, of course, on a bright day. Um, so uh, that was fun. So the whole point of this tool is to take measurements of different areas to determine what the color temperature and the lux or the illumination at that one point is where this little eye is located, right? So it doesn't measure the actual output, the amount of luminous flux coming out of a fixture. It is instead measuring um, the, where, where the light is actually landing. So this is useful more for like uh, programmers and LDs, designers who are trying to hit like target values on, you know, maybe a broadcast stage or um, a Broadway, uh, Broadway stage this would be really useful for that because you wanna make sure that your intensities are what you expect them to be at the location that you're lighting. So just because the, the spec sheet on the Forte here uh, gives a certain value for the amount of lumens, um, that's not something that we can really test or compare easily with other fixtures, even when they're sitting side by side because they have different beam angles, different field angles. There are a whole lot of other factors that come into play with how much light is being output. So let's just remember that this is a very uh, non-scientific test. We're using a cool tool and just kind of checking out to see how it functions and comparing fixtures from basically the, the same manufacturer to see what the differences are um, between those fixtures. You can't really compare these numbers uh, to a different shootout in a different environment. So if you were to go compare the numbers that I get on my meter to the, the numbers that, uh, that you would get on, on your meter concerning, uh, concerning lux values, they're just, they're not comparable. And besides lux, uh, or the brightness uh, wherever this little eyeball is located, uh, this also measures the quality of light or the ability of the light that is landing on this little eyeball to recreate colors in their true form as we know them with a standard light source like the sun. So a tool like this isn't really gonna be useful for EDM shows like I typically do, but since I've been doing so much more broadcast and recording work, uh, I figured this would be a great tool so that we can make sure that the camera is able to see what our eyes would be seeing in real life. So this has become a huge topic with all of these new, massive, highly powered LED fixtures that have been hitting the market in the last uh, five or six years, but really the arms race has been heating up tremendously. And now we're getting some of these fixtures that are, I mean, it's really incredible how bright of an output you can get. And uh, the, uh, the only downfall in this whole development process with these new LED fixtures is getting the CRI up. So we'll compare a couple of these, uh, these newer fixtures from Robe. Really excited to see how the Forte performs. Uh, again, Forte it has the transferable engine TE at the end. This is, this is great for me because I'm a stupid lighting guy. So anytime you see TE on the end of a Roby fixture, Esprit, Forte, they all have the transferable engine technology. It makes it like you can swap it out like it was a lamp, um, but with an LED engine, pretty cool. So the Forte here uh, and the, the Esprit over on the right side, those are both white source LED engines. And uh, the T2, which I'm really excited to see, I never even got a chance to play with the T1. Uh, the T2 is an additive uh, color mix engine, which means that instead of a white source and you're subtracting out with filters to get the color you desire, uh, you're adding colors together, which has its you know, pros and cons like everything, I suppose. I need to figure out how to do this real quick. Okay, here we go, real measurement. 
So this seems to be right on par with uh, what we're seeing in the spec sheet. Let's see if I can go down a little bit here. So again, this is without the spectral enhancement filter. This is just at 75% and about 50% zoom. So let's see if that changes with intensity. I'm gonna drop it down to 20%, see if there's any noticeable difference. Okay, so now we're at 20% uh, intensity. And CRI has actually decreased a little bit. But let's see what happens when we bring it up to 100%. Is it full? Very bright. And this is in the, I'm, I'm gonna shoot this in the center of the beam. So again, this is without any of the spectral enhancement filter or anything like that. Um, I do wanna see, however, if the CRI will go up if we drop down to like 3200, uh, 3200 Kelvin. So this looks around 3200 to me. Let me just measure it. Yeah, 31. You guys can see that. 31. And our CRI did go up. Let's take a look. So if you want a little bit, a little bit of a boost to your CRI without losing that much intensity, um, yeah, the the CTO is a good way to do it. Another really cool thing about this meter is if you uh, are taking measurements on stage, uh, this will actually show you what sort of tint you need to add or what sort of X Y coordinates you need to dial into your fixture. Um, to correct for a good white balance because there's nothing more important, well, I guess maybe than exposure <laughs> for, uh, for doing work with cameras than having a properly matched white balance across um, all of your lights and all your cameras. Super important. I didn't realize how important it was until I started doing uh, a bunch of these little like recording, live stream, even some broadcast gigs um, over the past couple of months. So in here I can set my, my target white balance, 5600K daylight. Um, and we can see what our actual measurement is and then what sort of changes you need to make to either your XY if your fixture has those settings um, or your uh, color correction. So I'm gonna go over to the MA and make some changes and try to hit that target of 5600K with, uh, with no green magenta shift. All right, I got, I got pretty close. So we've got our uh, 5600K and uh, Lux around 15,000. So at 5,600K, we're getting a CRI of 67.5 and our TLCI is coming in around 41, TM30, let's check it. So TM30 is the test I know the least about, but I do know that it's supposed to look like a circle uh, and not like uh, some sort of ellipse problem you would see in a physics textbook. Yeah, so when we drop that, the CRI 90 filter in, we get a TLCI, or excuse me, a TM30 of 82. That's a lot higher. But if we go back over to, oops, excuse me, our CRI 83, but I think we can do a little more fine tuning, get a little higher. Okay, uh, I just got an idea. So I finally figured out the, the method I think that works best for, for actually getting those values, but I want to test it against a, an actual like halogen fixture here. So I'm going to see if I can grab a source for or something. Do, 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 do. Those are LED. Oh. Ah. That looks like a conventional fixture. Ah, of course the, the one I pick uh, does not have a tail. Good old uh, Source 4 Junior. Ah, of course. You gotta improvise and literally adapt and overcome. Okay. Okay, so our source for Junior is on, and she definitely needs a bench focus and cleaning, but that shouldn't impact our CRI test too much here. Let me grab my, my 
grab my truth teller. Come on. Come on. There we go. We'll uh, do a nice little MA focus here. There we go. Perfect. I just did a dark calibration on the Seconic. I've got it more or less in the middle of the field. Um, and I'm just going to click the take measurement button. And once I do that, I can go over to text and see my, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, there we go. And that gives me my color temperature as well as any tint adjustment I would have to make to make the white balance even. And then from here, um, you can go and switch over to the other modes. The uh, only reason I'm showing you this is because I, I'm using this same method when I go and test the other lights. So I will uh, bring the fixtures into the programmer, right? And then I'll make any sort of changes with the various color channels and the CRI filters, whatever whatever the fixture actually like has available to um, to make those changes. That's you know where I'll spend all my time to get this screen correct, the, uh, the text screen. So I'll do the text screen first, and then I'll go over to the CRI. And <laughs> look at that. The CRI on, on the Source 4 Junior, I think it's got a 575 in it, is 99.3, <laughs> which I mean, I knew, it was, I knew it was gonna be high, but like, it's just funny seeing it in comparison to the moving lights. So now if we switch over to TM30, yeah, 99 and 100. Look at that circle. Look at that. And we'll go test our TLCI and 100, of course. I mean, this is to be expected because tungsten is kind of our benchmark when it comes to, um, when it comes to color rendering. That was really just kind of like a, a dummy check to make sure that the way I'm thinking about this in my mind makes sense with testing this because I think I was maybe overthinking a little bit because literally there's just one button <laughs> on this thing that says measure. So it's kind of hard to screw up right. But I just want to make sure, uh, maybe someone in the comments can tell me if I'm doing something wrong here. That's why I'm not really doing a scientific test because this is my first time using this thing, okay? I just want to just want to play around with it a little bit and see what, see what we can do. But it would make sense to first get our color temperature set to the color temperature that we want to test our, uh, our, our color rendering ability um, of these lights and then go and take those values. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. Just been punching in numbers into the console. Um, I made a couple of cue lists here, let me show you. So basically for each of the fixtures, I created three different cues, one at 2700K, one at 3200K and then one at 5600K, um, and then recorded the different values that um, the CRI test and the TM30 test uh, and the TLCI test. Except it looks like I missed the TLCI on the top one. I'll have to redo that one real quick. That's okay. But yeah, so you can just like run through these and say I want to look at um, the 2700K of the of the Forte and the 2700K of the T2. So now we have those pulled up and we can measure them directly. So that was kind of my methodology on that. I think that makes sense. Yeah, that, that's gotta be how, the, how you do this, right? <laughs> so this is what I've been doing with the fixtures. I got one of them on. This is not an ideal scenario because there is some ambient light in here that I actually don't have control of. There's some work lights over there. And I mean, technically the desk is emitting light that is being picked up by the sensor. Um, not a whole lot in comparison to the intensity of um, the T2 in this case. But uh, th again, this is not an ideal testing environment, but I just wanted to see if my methodology makes sense, right? So we've got the fixture on. In an ideal world, we would be in a black room, complete, completely pitch black except for that one fixture and I suppose the Seconic. Which I think is funny because it actually, the Seconic dims down when you take a measurement, um, probably for that purpose if I were to guess. So all I've been doing is uh, aiming this eyeball uh, 90 degrees straight into the 
middle of the projection area of the fixture, putting them at 100%, and then taking a look and seeing, oop, autofocus. Um, and then taking a look and seeing what sort of changes need to be made. Now this is, this is from the preset that I made already, so everything's been fine-tuned, but if I, for example, grab the T2 into the programmer here on the MA and change change the uh, tint value. So there was um, a tint value, 1.1 uh, magenta. So I adjusted that in the programmer on the tint channel for the T2 and uh, just got it so it said zero. And then I believe once you do that, that means that you're ready to take an actual um, measurement for, well, you've already got the measurement stored, which is nice. You don't have to retake the measurement to go check a different, um, uh, a different tile here. So then I can go over to CRI and then that should be our score, right? I mean, that makes sense to me. And this is also cool because you can like, you can store uh, memories. I think you got like 99 memories. Um, I wish there was more and I wish you didn't have to like plug it in with a USB cable. You, It'd be nice if there was a little SD card or something. I gotta say, it is super satisfying after like fine tuning each one of these individually, then turning on the uh, the cues. This is like the the 2700K um, color temperature cue, and they just all match. I know you probably can't tell too well on camera, but they are like dead even with each other. Um, it's very, very cool to see. Uh, so for better or for worse, I think I have found a new hobby and that is uh, putting this in front of every fixture I can find and making a couple different presets that I can use going forward because, I mean, let's be real. Uh, no matter what size show or where you're doing the show, most LDs are only ever going to run into the same, like probably like 100 or 150 fixtures on a super regular basis. So building up a, a whole setup of presets that I can just load in and, and instantly know that everything is going to be color matched is gonna be huge eventually. So um, I, I'm gonna make this like my own little personal project <laughs> to catalog as many fixtures as I can um, and record their CRI, uh, record the TM30 values, record everything that isn't necessarily published when you're looking at these fixtures online because everybody is so concerned about publishing uh, uh, the brightness of fixtures but and sometimes you'll see CRI a lot of times you'll see CRI now but that doesn't tell the whole story so I'm really interested in finding more out about this because I'm <laughs> this is a whole new realm for me you know I'm used to you know pressing the button that makes the atomics you know, flash on a, on a festival stage or, or whatever. Um, that's, that's kind of my bread and butter. And I'd really like to, really like to broaden my horizons a bit. Cause I think there's a, there's a lot to learn, um, that I don't know. So anyways, I know there's a ton of other people out there who know way more about uh, color science and, uh, and everything that goes into both manufacturing and, and measuring, um, the CRI and, power efficacy of, of these fixtures, but I just like playing with them. So I'm gonna play with them a little bit more here and it is almost, yeah, it is uh, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> so super spooky hours here at R90. Uh, before I send you off with some nice B-roll, I just wanna say thank you all for watching. Really appreciate you uh, nerding out with me, with my, my new toy here. And I uh, wanna, of course, say a big thank you to Joe Cole uh, and R90 Lighting, his company. Uh, here in the Seattle area, they do all sorts of lighting rentals. They do uh, design, everything from small shows, rentals, uh, dry hires, all the way up to festivals and uh, really big corporate events as well. So thanks, Joe. Also big thanks to Robe. <laughs> they didn't know I was doing this. I'm just messing around with some of their fixtures, but uh, they, uh, they did a demo day up here and uh, uh, Joe was nice enough to have the have the shop guys leave the lights out for me so I could play with them tonight. Anyways, yeah, I'll leave you off with some 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 fixture B roll, and uh, yeah, hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.